Well, look at this picture. It's not very pleasant, is it? It's a disaster. And so many disasters are happening all over the world so that we must be prepared for any disaster, especially if it comes near us, near home, near our cities. None of us can say a disaster won't hit us. There's tornadoes, there's earthquakes, there's hurricanes, there's typhoons, there's so many things can hit us. And today we're gonna to look at how to prepare our city if disaster hits. Not a pleasant topic, it's something we need to be ready for. Let's start out with this quote in Proverbs 3, 25 and 26. Have no fear of sudden disaster or of the ruin that overtakes the wicked, for the Lord will be your confidence and will keep your feet from being snared. Isn't this a comforting verse? The Lord will be with us in our confidence and he'll keep our feet from being snared. All the recent disasters are a wake up call for all of us. So let's prepare in advance. And I'm going to tell you how to and these points will help you to prepare your city, to prepare your church, to prepare yourself if a disaster hits. And we've had tornadoes only a few miles from our house. We've been in cities where there's been a volcanic eruption and all kinds of things. So we see that it does happen and we have to be ready. First of all, be grateful for your life and what you have. Learn to be extremely thankful every day. You don't know what a day will bring forth, and I don't either, so we need to appreciate life. Too many people live in grumbling and unhappiness, and they don't have to. They need to walk in thankfulness and gratefulness. We need to do this every day of our life. Get your life right with God and increase your prayer life. So important. We're getting ready for eternity. This is God's wake-up call to us. God is always speaking. Does he not want to bring our nation to himself and bring a huge revival in the land? Yes, he wants to. So strengthen your prayer life, purify your hearts, and walk in personal revival. This is what all of us are trying to do right now here at the International House of Prayer. We realize we need to be ready for all that's in store for us in the future. Prepare the church in your city for whatever may come. Every city needs to practically prepare for possible disasters. We were in Rabaul, Papua New Guinea, where a disaster hit a volcanic eruption, but the whole city was prepared. They were prepared. They knew exactly what to do to evacuate the city when a eruption came, and it did come, and they did escape. They were prepared. Spiritually prepared by increasing the prayer meetings in your own church and joining citywide prayer meetings. That's a way to really prepare. Get prayer meetings going in your city. Face disaster victoriously. Don't be overwhelmed. Don't lose your faith in God if a disaster hits your city. Realize God is greater than any disaster and will work it out for good. He will do it. He'll work it out for good. Share the love of Christ with disaster victims by meeting their needs. When we had a hurricane, when we were living in Virginia Beach a few years ago, we helped serve food through the Salvation Army. We were giving out and serving whenever possible. And this is a great thing to do if a disaster hits. And it also, it encourages and comforts your own heart as you serve others and get your eyes off yourself. It's such a tremendous thing to do. Then trust God in the midst of disasters and worldwide shakings. People get so worried about all these shakings, but the Bible says that these things are going to increase, so we need to trust Him in the midst of the disasters. This is a time for the church to wake up, to arise, and to shine. And that's the best way to walk in peace. We must show others the peace of God through our lives. So pray for disaster victims to stand strong in their faith in God in the midst of the shaking. Show forth godliness instead of evil. Be careful to live a godly life. What is inside comes out. When we were in a hurricane in Virginia Beach, in our neighborhood, if things were okay in our neighborhood, 
a few days after the hurricane. As time went on, people began to get impatient and irritable. So we need to pray for the people of God to shine his light even in the darkest of times. So when you hear of a disaster, pray for the church. Pray that they will shine out as bright beacons right in the midst of the disaster. And we need to live and prepare for the eternal. God is permitting these things and he wants us to prepare for the eternal. So we need to learn to live for what is really important. And it's not earthly things. It's eternal life. Narrow down your interests. Everything is about heaven. It's time for us to see things from a heavenly perspective. God wants us to look up and to see him and the glory that's ahead of us in eternity and in the millennial reign with Jesus. So get your eyes off the temporal, off earthly things and look up to heaven and pray for the salvation of souls and share your faith. During disasters, during times of difficulties, people are so open to the gospel. They need hope, and you have the hope of eternal life. God is the refuge that everyone needs. This is our greatest opportunity for reaching souls. Greatest opportunity. When you hear of other disasters, pray that many souls will come into the kingdom and that God's people will share their faith. Pray fervently for countries that are in major worldwide turmoil. It's our responsibility and it affects each one of us. Now don't wait for a disaster to apply these truths. God wants each of us to stand strong right now. He wants us to live for eternity. Reach out in love and pray for the lost. None of us is outside the reach of a disaster in our city. We all need to live passionate lives, preparing for our eternal home. Jesus deserves our lives now. Let's live 100% for God and pray with increasing fervency. When we hear about another disaster on the news, let's pray fervently for those victims. Let's not fear disaster, but be confident in the Lord. His heart is that we enter into urgent watchfulness and prayer without fear. He is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in times of trouble. Let's close with these verses in Psalm 5, 11 and 12. But let all who take refuge in you be glad. Let them ever sing for joy. Spread your protection over them, that those who love your name may rejoice in you. For surely, O Lord, you bless the righteous. You surround them with your favor as with a shield. Thank you, Lord, that you are our shield, and we can find you as our refuge. We praise your name, that you are in control of everything, and you are our protection in times of difficulty. Help us, Lord, to be your light in this needy world. In Jesus' name, amen. And God bless you.